Okay, so today we're going to uh, dive into CPH4. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, it's pretty fascinating stuff. It is. So we've got uh, a whole bunch of different AI models yeah. that have been talking about this and trying to figure out how to synthesize it. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing is they've come up with a whole bunch of different approaches. Oh, yeah. A lot of different approaches. And they're not just like random ideas. They're actually grounded yeah. in real science, which yeah. I think is really cool. Yeah, it is cool. Like these AI models are smart. Yeah. They're drawing on this massive amount of scientific data yeah. to come up with some pretty sophisticated ideas. Yeah. So let's jump into it. So one ahead. of the models, when 2.5 latest, uh, suggested using recombinant DNA technology. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. Basically like hijacking a cell's machinery to make CPH4 for us. Exactly, like turning a cell into a little CPH4 factory. Exactly. But they got pretty specific, too, oh, yeah, about how to do it. Like what? Like they recommended using E. coli or yeast as the host organism. Right. Which makes sense. Yeah, those are like the workhorses of the lab. Exactly, easy to work with. Mm -hmm. And they even talked about codon optimization. Okay, so what is that? It's like tweaking the gene ah. to make sure that the organism can actually read it and produce the protein correctly. Oh, so it's kind of like translating a recipe. Yeah. From like French to Japanese. Exactly. So the chef in Tokyo can actually follow it. Yeah, make sure the instructions are clear. Right. Even for a tiny little single-celled organism. That's so cool. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, so another model, Llama 3.1.8b Instruct Q80. Uh, brought up a really important point. Okay. About potential unintended consequences. Oh, yeah. That's huge. Yeah. We got to think about that. Like they were saying, even if we can synthesize CPH4 perfectly, right. we still don't fully understand how it might interact with all the other stuff. Yeah, all the complex stuff happening in the body. Yeah, it's complicated. Super complicated. And so it's like, you know, throwing a new ingredient yeah. into a really delicate recipe. You might end up with something totally unexpected. Right. And not necessarily in a good way. Exactly. Okay. So we don't want to create like a Frankenstein molecule. No. That ends up doing more harm than good. No, definitely not. All right. So let's shift gears a bit. Okay. Adrian Braltness, Hermes Tutheta Lama 3, 8B.S1 Simon, suggested a totally different approach. Okay. I'm listening. Biochemical synthesis. Ah, so building it from scratch. Yeah, like piece by piece in the lab. Like Legos. Yeah, like molecular Legos. That's a good analogy. Thanks. That's a really intricate process. Yeah, I bet. Like you have to figure out the exact sequence of reactions. Right. You got to make sure everything's pure. Yeah. And that the final product is exactly what you want. No room for error. Nope. Now, Llama 3.2 latest uh, brought up testing. Oh yeah, testing's key. Like they really emphasize that any synthetic CPH4 we create yeah. has to be rigorously tested. Absolutely, for safety and effectiveness. Yeah, you don't want to like build a supersonic jet right. and forget to check if the wings are attached properly. Exactly. So we've got two main approaches so far. Okay. Recombinant DNA technology and biochemical synthesis, mm -hmm. both with their own challenges. And what I find interesting is yeah. these AI models, they're not just like spitting out solutions. Right. They're actually highlighting the risks, yeah. the ethical considerations, yeah. and the need for testing. It's like they're telling us to be careful. Yeah, to proceed with caution. Which is reassuring. It is. I think yeah. it shows that they understand the complexities of science. I feel like they're not just naive. Right, they get it. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. But there's so much more to talk about. There is. So let's take a quick breather, and then we'll delve into some even more fascinating insights okay, that's good. from these AI models in part two. I'm ready for it. All right. Let's do it. So, you know what I found really interesting about all these AI discussions? What's that? How much they focused on the ethical side of things. Oh, yeah. Like, they were really worried about the implications of messing with CPH4. It was like they were programmed to be cautious. Which is a good thing, right? I think so. Yeah. It's like yeah. they're saying, hey, humans, slow down and think about this. Right. Are you sure you want to mess with the very building blocks of intelligence? Exactly. Yeah. That's a good point. One model when 2.5 latest brought up access and equity oh that's huge yeah like if cph4 becomes a reality who gets to benefit from it right is it just going to be another privilege for the wealthy exactly or will everyone have access and how do we even ensure fair distribution that's a big question yeah it's like a preview of all those ethical dilemmas we're going to face with genetic engineering oh, holy. like who gets to decide what enhancements are acceptable and who gets left behind heavy stuff yeah deep stuff um win 2.5 that latest also mentioned misuse 
Oh, yeah. Like, what if someone uses it to create designer babies with super intelligence? Right, just like a sci-fi movie come to life. Totally. Where do you draw the line? Between therapy and enhancement. It's blurry. Yeah. And what happens when we start messing with what it means to be human? Good questions. Okay. So we've got ethical dilemmas, misuse. What else? Well, Jack Snick's L3 Lexi Uncensored latest brought up off-target effects. Okay, what are those? It's basically the idea that even if we create perfect CPH4, yeah. it might still screw up other things in the body. Oh, like unintended consequences? Exactly. We don't fully understand how it'll interact with this crazy complex system. So it's like fixing one bug in a software program right. and creating 10 more in the process. Exactly, which is why testing is so important. Like Llama 3.2. Latest was saying. You got to be super careful. And make sure this thing is hitting the right targets. And not causing more problems. Right. Okay, so now for the really interesting part. Okay, lay it on me. QWQ. Latest suggested that CPH4 could be a cognitive enhancer. Whoa, hold on. Even for people who aren't pregnant. Like a brain booster pill. Yeah, exactly. Imagine that. That's wild. What would that do to society? I don't know. Would we have super intelligent elites and everyone else left behind? And what about addiction or abuse? So many questions. It's like these AI models are forcing us to confront the future head on. They're making us think about the implications of our actions. Right before it's too late. Before we open Pandora's box. Okay, one last thing before we wrap up this part. Okay. I was struck by how many models talked about regulation. Oh, yeah, like we need rules for this stuff. Like guardrails. To make sure CPH4 is developed and used responsibly. Ethically. And for the benefit of all humankind. Exactly. Uh, all right, so we've talked about how to make this CPH4 stuff and all the ethical stuff. Right, all the big questions. Yeah, so now let's think about what we could actually do with it. Okay, the applications. Yeah, like if we could actually make it safely and responsibly, what could we use it for? That's the exciting part, right? Yeah, some of the AI models actually had some pretty cool ideas. Oh, yeah, they did. For example, Llama 3.1.8b Instruct Q80 talked about using it to treat neurodevelopmental disorders. Oh, wait. Yeah, like think about it. Yeah. CPH4 is crucial for brain development. Right. So what if we could use it to help kids with autism, ADHD, all those cognitive challenges? That would be huge. It would be revolutionary. The total game changer. Yeah, and QWQ.latest even suggested using it for educational enhancement. Like making kids smarter. Yeah, boosting their learning abilities. That's a little scary though, right? It is, yeah. Like, would it be available to everyone? Or would it create a new kind of inequality? Right, those are the questions we need to be asking. Oh, absolutely. So treating neurological disorders, enhancing learning, what else? Well, a couple of models, Llama 3.2.latest and... QWQ.latest both mentioned neurodegenerative diseases. Oh, wow, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Exactly. Those are big ones. Yeah, especially with our aging population. It would be a huge breakthrough if we could slow down or even reverse those diseases. we got to be careful, though, right? Of course, we're still in the realm of speculation here. Yeah, it's all theoretical. We need a lot more research to see if CPH4 can really do all this. Right. We don't want to give people false hope. No, but it's definitely worth exploring. Okay, now remember... How Jacksnick's L3 Lexi Uncensored. Oh. Latest was talking about CPH4 and human evolution. Oh, yeah. That was a mind bender. Yeah, like what if messing with CPH4 means we're actually taking evolution into our own hands? That's a big what if. Yeah, where does that lead us? I don't know. Do we create a species of super intelligent beings? And do we accidentally engineer ourselves out of existence? Whoa. It's crazy to think about. It really is. So what's the bottom line here? I think the key takeaway is this. Yeah. Synthetic CPH4, it's still hypothetical. Right. But it represents a major turning point in science. Okay. It could revolutionize medicine education, even our understanding of intelligence itself. But it also forces us to ask some Really tough questions. Yeah, about who we are, what we value, like what kind of future we want. It's not just about what we can do. It's about what we should do. Exactly. The future CPH4 and maybe even the future of humanity is in our hands. That's a powerful thought. Well said. To all our listeners out there, keep those brains buzzing. Because the quest to understand CPH4 is just beginning.